Hey, it's your sister Roland. All I need is a few minutes. So because I've been watching a lot of court cases and different cases, you know, different st um, crime stories, so YouTube has been sending more my way. And I just happened to fall upon this story, it, this story and plus this parole hearing. I got it from a YouTuber by the name of Mandu. I'll put the, um, the actual all of the hearing in the description so you could formulate your own opinion i'm just going to give my two cents on this parole hearing he has been paroled so he was granted parole <clears throat> and this started uh this whole situation started from him yeah, this young man who was on my right was responsible for the taking out of Ronald Shaw, who's pictured here on my left with his wife, Rosanna. So, Shannon Touche, who's this young man right here, but have all the words on him. His grandfather was a contractor. You know, he built houses. And his grandfather, whose name was Ernest Touche, was hired by Ronald Shaw to build his dream house. I guess they had a house, but, you know, he wanted to build from the ground up an actual house that you know he probably designed or was you know took part in designing and this is where he wanted to live and his wife was like two months pregnant so he hired his grandfather to build this house because that's what the grandfather did so um shannon was you know always in trouble probably not in trouble where he was probably getting arrested because I think his lawyer had said, you know, he don't have a, like, he didn't have a criminal record or whatever before, but he was getting into a lot of mischief. And he had said he, you know, with his own mouth that he was smoking marijuana. And plus he was hanging out with people, well, people over the age of 18, they wasn't that far apart in age, but they were 18. And he were hanging out. He was hanging out with these people. And these were the people that, you know, was, that planned him and these um, other young men planned this. That was supposed to be a robbery, but ended up being a murder. So his other so-called friends, I don't know what their acquaintances, whatever, Ronald Benson, Reginald Basil. And it was another young man by Nicholas Domingue. Because they had borrowed his car to do this crime. So Ronald Shaw hired the grandfather, right? And I guess the grandfather, you know, since the two, it was him and his other brother. Shannon had another brother. Since, you know, they probably was getting into a lot of things that they have no business getting into so i guess ernest talked to ronald shaw and he agreed to hire these young men probably knowing about you know they're really troubled young men but you know at least give them a chance to prove themselves you know do some honest living so he hired them to help the grandfather on the house and i guess seeing what this man had acquired and then you know he was already smoking marijuana people say oh marijuana is harmful it's from the earth and stuff like that but many people who smoke that thing always get caught up in some type of foolishness sometimes always caught up in some type of foolishness just like the case with the young lady that I'm gonna cover too, that, you know, she killed a rapper who's supposed to be related to Beyonce. She was smoking marijuana and drinking Hennessy, which is never a good combination because nothing good ever happens from those things. Whether you, you know, nobody get hurt, but something wrong always ends up happening. 
when weed and different things are mixed together or even weed. But whatever. So he saw what this man had acquired. But not knowing like the actual history of what he went through to acquire what he had. He was in the Air Force for like four years. And, you know, getting into the Air Force, I think, you know, you have the past. You have to have a certain level of intelligence. And, you know, it's not easy to get into the Air Force. And he left the Air Force. And you would think that, you know, sometimes people, there's certain levels. They came out of the military. They won't, they're not going to take any type of job. You know what? But then there are some people, it doesn't matter. They need to um, feed their family. They have things to do. They're willing to get even the lowest of job, knowing with their ambition, they're not going to stay where they, where they started. So he started as an oil field laborer. He worked his way up to management. And with, you know, all the assets he acquired, the wealth, he started his own oil and gas drilling business. So you know he was making money. But he started from the bottom and he got up there you, with hard work. So it's not like this was a, what he was a white man. It's not like a white man who was born into money or whatever. Yes, maybe his color helped him or whatever, but he actually worked to acquire what he had. So he saw that he had all this wealth and, you know, eventually discovered the man had a safe and put money in the safe. So he told his friends that he probably wanted to impress. Say, hey, you know, we get some money or whatever. We could buy, you know, these young kids. We could buy a lot of weed. We could do this. We could do all kinds of stuff. So they planned for weeks to rob this couple. It's supposed to be a robbery. But then... It ended up turning into a murder because on March 18, 1998, Ronald and Rosanna had just finished came from the grocery. He had grocery bag in his hand. He had uh, like a few ba bags in his hand. Was obviously no threat. They were sitting around waiting, you know, for them to come from wherever they came from, where it's coming from. And they ambushed him and then immediately... One of the other two accomplices, one of them shot him twice and then the other one shot him another time. Don't even know why. They didn't shoot the, the wife at, yet. So they made her go into her dad's husband's um, pockets and take her the key and open the door so they could go into the safe. And then they took, um, they took some jewelry and then they took money. The money probably was five thousand or seven thousand dollars. Some places you see five thousand, some places say seven thousand, but it was around that um, amount. Back in nineteen ninety eight, that's a whole lot of money. So in all of this, with the five thousand, if they got five thousand or seven thousand dollars, they supposedly only give Shannon up to four hundred dollars, up to four hundred dollars. So. Probably because, you know, his role was very minimal. Like he didn't actually put in the work so they could get the money in a sense. That's what, that's what I think. So at first, you know, they suspected the wife or whatever. And then they started looking at other people. But then, you know, the these guys had ski masks. But the ski masks don't cover your, um, cover your face and stuff like that. But... His mouth was exposed and uh, Rosanna remembers stating that the, stating that the, one of the accomplices, one of the people that did it, they had a gold tooth and Shannon had a gold tooth. So, and then um, Shannon's girlfriend was trying to lie, say he was with her, but then that quickly fall, fell apart because I think his mother said that no, he went out with friends in a red car. And then the neighbors said they saw a red car in the neighborhood. Mind you, that's probably a place where a lot of, um, you know, people, well-to-do people live. So if somebody odd comes in the area, you gonna, they're gonna see you and they're gonna point you out and they're gonna remember that. So putting two and two together, they singled, um, they zoomed in on Shannon and, you know, found out that he was responsible and they had borrowed, that's how the other guy 
who they got the car from. He was in the charge. He was in charge with murder, but he was charged with accessory af after the fact. Domingue or whatever his name is. So all of them, you know, got. At first they had charged Shannon with first degree, but then ended up, I guess, you know, after finding out everything that happened, they charged him with sec second degree. But however, the other guys, you know, Ronald and Ronald and Reginald, they got charged with first degree <clears throat> because one of them shot twice and the other one shot once. So Shannon was granted parole because I think he spent like 25 years in jail so f at that time so far. Um, the wife, the widow had um, spoken because, you know, she said it has altered her life. And she said, you know, they were basically their whole lives was ahead of them. Uh, them, you know, they was going to have this new baby and it was going to come in this new um, house and stuff like that. They never, never knew that, you know, hiring somebody to do work on their home would alter their lives. And, you know, that was, you know, to have something like that happen in front of you where they actually, you know, shot her husband in front of that, something traumatic, something that you would never ever forget. And March 18, that's a, that's a date that would always forever stay in her mind forever. And even though, you know, she's married, it's still, when she was speaking, it's, it's like she was reliving the experience and then she had she said no she she said it's easy of course it's easy you know to be a model citizen in jail you know but what about what he gets outside and then the ADA there was ADA that came in really didn't he he was saying that you know he don't think that he understand he took full accountability or whatever or he understand the actual role that he played in the demise of Ronald Shaw, but he didn't come with any like evidence and stuff like that. So of course, he had Shannon had a lot of people like the warden come and speak on his behalf. He had his mother, he had his wife, mind you, his wife. Then I guess they got married in prison. She knew him from since she was in high school. And actually waited 25 years for this man to come out. I sure hope it's worth it. Because sometimes women be waiting, waiting on, I'm sure if it was him, would he have waited? We don't know. But I'm sure hope it was worth it, waiting 25 years for this man. But whatever, that's, that's her. So, and then he had his defense lawyer came and talk. Um, to, um, for him and then this um, I guess it's, it's a particular program where you come out of jail that you get into and they spoke like they were willing to speak if need be so he had a lot of people in favor and many people came you know to support him so you know of course when the parole board saw that they were like you know we look at him now that's what he did when he was 17 or whatever so we cannot condemn and like don't grant him parole because of what he still did in 17 he has did you know a lot of changes he made a lot of changes and getting written up it was not like serious even when he got written up twice i believe it was not like serious stuff you know i think he had the latest one in 2021 was um, music that he had recorded on a device so because of that you know they granted him parole so my thing is, this young man, you know, he is, his mother is white and his father probably is a black man. And some people say like, so what, what does that matter? Yes, that matters a lot because a lot of people don't think about this when they get into interracial relationships. Most of the time, if you're not, um, if you are not intentional, people like to use intentional, the word intentional. If you're not intentional, you're not adamant about, you know, your child's identity. A lot of these kids really struggle with belonging. Where do they belong? They don't never feel like they belong anywhere. Especially if you're not intentional about teaching them that, you know what? You, your mom is white. You are black. You know, people call 
you know, kids that have come out of this, uh, a union like this, mixed race, biracial or whatever. So you have to decide how are you going to raise your child? Are you going to raise them, you know, mixed? Are you going to raise them black or whatever? You have to decide. And then you have, this is something you have to over and over, over and over and over tell this child, this is who you are. This is where you came from. But peace, most of the time people don't do that. They probably think that, you know, everybody's going to accept me. Look at me. I have a mixed child. And, but it's not like this all of the time. Not everybody's going to be happy that you have mm -hmm. a mixed race child. And not everybody's going to, yes, there's some people that are going to be, wow, look here, cute child and stuff like that. But there's some people that are not going to like this. And you're going to find it on the white side and on the black side. And to me, this young man more related more to the black side because he did it. Here he has his grandfather. His grandfather even supported him um, when he was in jail. Yes, he didn't like what he did. He said that his grandfather expressed that, but he more related to his black side, his black side. And then got caught up with the wrong type of people. Because he don't know who he is. So he tend to, he just was like a follower and he wanted to impress these, um, um, these young boys or whatever, these older boys, he wanted to impress them though. He had a grandfather who was a working man, you know, who had his own company, but he could not relate to his grandfather because his grandfather's white. He didn't see himself in his grandfather. He more saw himself in these black boys, even though they were not, you know, like the actual color, but he more related to them. You see, even him with the gold tooth, you know, that's not really from people who, um, yeah, you could find maybe a few white people that do that, but there's a lot of black people that like to put the gold tooth. So he more related to them because he didn't really didn't have no identity because according to the mom, his father was never in his life. So he probably doesn't even know his black side of the family. And then when he got closer to people that, you know, probably looked like him, it was not a good, um, good company at all. So he, instead of trying to please his grandfather and his mother, he wanted to please these young men. So that was this, setting this up, didn't know it was going to turn this way. But setting this up, you know, it would give him brownie points with these young men. They'll probably seem cool. They'll probably be closer to him because he's trying to find who he, he, who he is. He never knew who he was. And this is my thing. Yes, it's a good thing, you know, he, he worked and stuff like that. And he works, he built, he made coffins. But if he still has not found who he is, where he belongs, yes, he, he got baptized, he's part of a church, but who are you? Who are you? Just like when um, um, Jacob didn't have an identity, he didn't accept the identity that he had, he wanted his brother's identity, and then he pretended to be his brother so he could take his brother's blessing, and then when God, when he asked God the blessing, God was like, who are you? Who are you? I can't bless anybody. Who are you? Because you, you took upon an identity that was not you. So who are you? So if this young man don't know who he is, he can, he might end up in the back in the same situation again, because it's like, um, I don't see, I don't know if he have a, because I didn't see the person come and speak on his behalf, like a strong man that he could relate to that he that has influence in his life because according to the mom the wife is his mentor the wife is his mentor the wife that waited 25 years for him oh yeah she's highly highly educated because she's a teacher but do you really have the influence how can she relate to him yes there were people that was there in solidarity you know was on the zoom but not all of them spoke so if he doesn't find who he is he could still end up in a situation like this because he don't know who he is. Still end up messing with the wrong type of people like he did when he was 17. So what, you know, what was there any changes to find out who he is, where he belong? Because 
you're a husband now. He's a husband. He has kids. You're the leader. But if the leader doesn't know who he is, how can he lead? And that's why I was like, I was, um, I agreed with the, even though, with, you know, the ADA didn't come with nothing. But I agree, it's like, it's easy, of course, it's easy to be um, a model citizen, a model person in jail. That's so easy. But when you get out there and then you have to figure out stuff by yourself, are you able to do that? Because you never knew who he was. You went into jail, lost, a lost young man, lost and confused, didn't know where he belonged. Are you still that? Are you in arrested development? Are you still that young boy? Yes, you grew up and stuff like that. You give other people advice and he helps. He helps. He had, he built a lot of relationships with the inmates and stuff like that. But how we know those relationships that he built with those inmates won't be something when he comes out and then they link up and they get in some type of foolishness. So this is where, I don't know. Yes, it's um, about, you know, getting them rehabilitated so they are able to integrate and be successful in the community but then a lot of these men that are in prison they struggle with identity issues sometimes those who you know probably were in a um interracial relation that was a product of an interracial relationship they don't know where to belong somebody that was only raised by their mother or their grandmother or aunt, stuff like that. They struggle with identity because whether you want, you know, I know they villainize a lot of men, but your identity comes from your father. And I see that in my life, when you have been affirmed, when you have been validated by your father, it's you, your life is different. It's different. Your identity comes from your father. That's why it's so important. You cannot have children. You cannot procreate with any any man as a woman. You cannot you can't even procreate with any woman as a man. Because your you literally your kids' life depend on you choosing the right man to be the father to your children. Because if they then and then even if you were to make a mistake. And you true happen to choose the you know the wrong man. What type of men that do you put in that child's life that could relate to them, that they that have influence on them, that they even scared of? Like you know you know what I can't do this because Uncle Johnny not gonna like this. I can't do this. That could relate to them. Yes, you didn't choose right before, but the men that you do you put men in this child's life, whether it's a girl or boy. That's going to put them on the right path that the father was supposed to do. And people don't think that way, I guess. So I do wish him all the best. But he needs to find his identity. Yes, it's good. You, He's part of a church and stuff like that. He got baptized. But he needs to get his identity. Because he never had that. That's why he got caught up with these young men. And then got caught up in this situation. Anyway, that's all I had to say about this situation. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye.